The news of the week, though, is we had a CPI mm-hmm. that came out yesterday, Matt. Yes. Um, that was a little bit of a surprise um, because it came in. Well, I guess it depends on who, what headline you read. Mm-hmm. Um, you can either hear that he- the inflation is still incredibly strong. That's up 4% year over year. Yeah. Um, but also you can read the headline that inflation is growing at its slowest pace since March 2021. Yeah. Um, because the month over month growth was only 0.1%. Yeah. So that's um, 1.2% annualized. Yeah. But going back a whole year, we're at 4%. What, 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 yeah. we'll read between the lines, man. Four, what say 4% you? still is uh, uh, elevated. If you're talking about like a real number, it's still to above the target. target. Yeah. X is target. Yeah. Um, but I think that if you look back at the history of where inflation has been, last month it was, it, it was up 0.4% in a single month. I was getting scared. And then we had the huge jobs numbers. I was getting more scared. But now, only 0.1, which is really low. If we had a full year of 0.1s, we'd have like, what, one and a half or something yeah. uh, uh, inflation in general. So and the, for the summer. Yeah, yeah. So And the other thing, too, is year-over-year year inflation last month was 4.9, and now it's 4. Yeah. So that's a huge drop in just yeah. one month. Yeah. Uh, I think that it, it is great news. I think last month, if anything... There was more optimistic things because it like nominally got low, year over year nominally got lower. Yeah. But month over month, like I think that was like a false hope of last month. But this month, there's not there's not much bad that I can see in it. Yeah. The only bad thing that I think, and you told me the other, you told me a couple days or whenever we learned about it, uh, energy prices. I energy prices were down significantly this month, and I'm wondering if that is going if they're going to come back up because middle east is going to cut oil production or what kind of impact that yeah have. yeah you know, i mean one of the other headlines and i'm glad you brought it up matt is um core inflation when you strip out uh, the more volatile as they say food and energy um what was up quite a bit more um than yeah uh, or sorry yeah if you strip out food and energy it the cpi was up higher because food and energy have actually come down yeah. significantly yeah, that's and um, I think you were, I think we were talking about this yesterday and you were a little surprised because you were like, well, I thought energy was going to be start creeping up because yeah. the Saudis are reducing, um, you know, the, their drilling or what they're producing. Um, and, and I think, you know, I was reading articles yesterday that mm-hmm. maybe natural gas might start, you know, another bull market. So I think, okay. you know, I think the story's fully read, yeah. written, but right now today, um, food and energy prices have decreased, you know, substantially and that's keeping the overall basket yeah. Um, relatively, you know, coming down. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, are those all those other um, pieces of inflation? Now, if you look at kind of the um, the non core, you, you know, you're actually just looking at, you know, the if you're looking, you know, is everything else staying sticky and staying? Hungry? Yeah. Yeah. That's the question. Um, shelter being one of those, mm-hmm. which I know we'll get into and talk about a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I think that for at least for the CPI, um, when we're talking about core and not core, the uh, shelter is such a, it's a even bigger, slightly, but a bigger component of core because you're stripping up food and energy. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if you just back the map, napkin math, um, shelter is about 8% of the total for, uh, for core or for, um, I'm sorry, for inflation period for all items. Wait, it's 30, 30%. Or that's, I think that's shelter. So I'm, all shelter. I'm sorry, all shelter. Uh, yeah. But for rent of primary shelter, which yes. is this discrete category that we're, that, you know, that's kind of the apartment market, is um, th- that is about 8% of the total, m- maybe more or less 10% of the core. Um, so if you're going to, if you're going to move 5%, which I think is totally doable, then you can um then so it's about seven point five percent I'm sorry of total that's the weight that we see right there in the middle um uh, under so that's thirty four which rent of shelter I think also includes owners equivalent of shelter yeah rent um, but owner. rent of primary residence is it is seven point five weighted um is as part of the total and maybe roughly you know I would say it's ten percent or so basically though if we go from eight point seven which is you know their measure of rent growth if we go eight point seven to a more normal three point five then that's like uh, a half a percentage point off of like off of the inflation numbers right there. Mm-hmm. And that's almost expected right now. Um, I think that we are at, you know, I think rents, the, the way that CPI has measured them is uh, ha- are starting to come down. Yeah. And, and that's, I think, the kind of broader story when it comes to uh, 
And that's what we've been talking about all week, Matt. And, you know, we've been talking about these, this theme of these, you know, long variable lags and how they can be very confusing and, and all these base effects um, that come yeah. to place because the way that CPI is calculating um, rent, the way that they're looking at it is really is more ref, um, reflective of leases that were signed last year. And so really capturing more of market rents 12 months ago. Yeah. Um, it, it's not exactly like, it's not like the price, what it, the price was 12 months ago, but that's m closer to what it's measuring rather than like the market rate in rents today. Yeah. As we can see that we know, looking back, rents were growing very strong really until about like August mm -hmm. or September. Then August, they started declining. And so, you know, we would imagine we, we would see, you know, some... The, that's when we would start seeing um, the slowdown in CPI. Yeah, around is around this year in August um, and September, and so it's not surprising that we still see relatively yep. elevated levels. And also, since rents were still rising, you know, we have that base effect. Mm -hmm. And we also know at the end of last year, kind of Q4, and then halfway through Q1 of 23, we saw rents decline. Demand was at its lowest level, you know, in more yeah. than a decade. Um, so we ha and so there's going to be a period. We, we can see this happening um, that, you know, this fall and this winter, mm -hmm. you know, we should see very slow growth. It's going to yeah. seep into CPI. And and so, again, we're going to be there's going to be articles about how like rents are. Yeah. Rents yeah. are declining. Then you'll know that rents are going to start to grow. <laughs>